Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. CCTV reportedly catches man damaging car at Maypen Police Station. A man has been charged after the front and rear windshields of an unmarked police car was damaged at the Maypen Police Station in Clarendon on Wednesday night. Joseph Summon, a 21 year old delivery man from Racetrack in the parish, was arrested after he was reported a caught on camera using a chair to hit the car, which is the registered property of the Commissioner of Police. Soman has been charged with malicious destruction of property. The police did not provide a court date for the accused. It was reported that about 11 p.m., Soman and other family members were at the Maypen police station, where his 29-year-old brother was held by police. The man was taken into custody as a suspect in the case of simple larceny. Police said when at the station, the family members became irritated. A metal chair from the waiting area of the precinct was used to smash the front and back windshield of a great Toyota Corolla motor car assigned to the Maypen CIB. The police said following the criminal act, someone immediately rode off the compound on a bicycle. However, CCTV cameras at the station showed him carrying out the act. Attempts by the police to find someone proved futile, but family members brought him back to the station, where he reportedly admitted to the offence after he was confronted with the CCTV footage. He was subsequently charged. The value of the damage of the police unit has not yet been ascertained. Cops still searching for Hannah Town double murder suspects. The police have not yet been able to capture any of the two suspects identified as the trigger men in a double murder, which occurred in Hannah Town, Kingston two weeks ago. The suspects Donovan Rowe, who goes by the alias Kumi, and Devil, and another man known as Triple Five, were identified after investigators launched a probe into the killings. Those killed were Lance Thompson, 28, otherwise called Jaja, or Bibi, from Upper Rose Lane, and Javon Ferguson, 30, also called Pim Pim, from Upper Oxford Street. The police said the men who were attacked and shot by a gunman in the broad daylight on November 29 were killed because of an ongoing gang conflict for control of turf in the community. The police are asking the two suspects to turn themselves in immediately. It was reported that about 9.40 a.m., Thompson and Ferguson were standing along Upper Oxford Street when a Toyota Pro Box drove up along the roadway and stopped near where they stood. Three men, the police said, alighted from the vehicle, pulled guns and opened fire hitting Thompson and Ferguson, both of whom ran and collapsed a short distance away. The gunman went back into the vehicle, drove off and escaped. The injured men were taken to the Kingston Public Hospital where they were pronounced dead upon arrival. Police recovered more than 20 spent casing of 9mm cartridges at the murder scene. Message by the Honorable Nigel Clark, Minister of Finance and Public Service. Jamaica is experiencing a robust economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. After economic growth of 8.2% last fiscal year and a projection of 4.5% for this fiscal year, economic output is expected to attain pre-COVID levels by 2023. Unemployment is lower today than it was prior to the pandemic. And our debt to GDP ratio is also lower today than prior to the pandemic. With the possible exception of Guyana, no other country in this hemisphere can claim a similar experience. Despite this encouraging recovery, however, Global uncertainties loom on multiple fronts. The war in Ukraine continues to have a global impact with no sign of ending. Europe is forecasted to experience an economic recession next year. And some analysts, not all, but some analysts say that there's an appreciable risk that the United States may also experience an economic recession as well. In addition, Global inflationary pressures are likely to remain for some time. And furthermore, international financing conditions are tightening as central banks around the world raise interest rates to battle inflation. From our historical experience, we know that building resilience and creating policy buffers in advance are important strategies for successful navigation of and recovery from shocks should they materialize. Looking across the horizon, therefore, it is important that we act in advance and ahead of time. 
in always seeking to increase fiscal space, broaden our options, and make Jamaica stronger. Over the next two fiscal years, in 2023-24 and 2024-25, Jamaica has over one billion US dollars of external debt maturing that needs to be refinanced at what could possibly be interest rates that are higher than today. Earlier this year, the International Monetary Fund launched a new product, the Resilience and Sustainability Facility that would allow Jamaica to access up to 763 million US dollars at an interest rate of approximately 3.8% and a repayment period of 20 years with no principal repayment for the first 10 years. This is a compelling instrument that if we access would not only support our climate resilience building strategy, but also potentially save Jamaica approximately $35 million per year over 20 years in interest costs as against accessing financing in capital markets using our current average blended market borrowing costs as a comparison, even before we consider that market interest rates may rise further. This combination of building resilience while also achieving fiscal savings would come at a critical time. It would allow us to invest in job creating and resilient infrastructure, enhance our transition to renewable energy, thereby reducing our energy vulnerability, even as we continue to prioritize human capital development. Jamaica must take advantage of this opportunity. At the same time, during this period of uncertainty, though we have over 4.3 billion US dollars in gross foreign exchange reserves, in order to ensure that we are not overly exposed to external developments that could derail foreign exchange inflows, we will also access the precautionary liquidity line where approximately 1 billion US dollars would become available to us should we need it. The precautionary liquidity line is an instrument of the International Monetary Fund for countries with strong economic fundamentals. And Jamaica's qualification for this credit line is a signal of our economic strength and stability. These arrangements will not interfere with our already planned programs and activities. It is and will be business as usual with the additional ability to access financing if the global outlook worsens. My fellow Jamaicans, we are at a different era of our economic development, one where we anticipate events in advance and provide for them. We have put in place a natural disaster strategy, capitalize a natural disaster fund, and launch the world's first catastrophe bond independently sponsored by a small country. These financing arrangements are designed to protect us from natural disaster shock. Similarly, today, thinking ahead, we reached a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund for the Resilience and Sustainability Facility and a precautionary liquidity line to ensure that our development can proceed and continue even in the event of possible external shock. This is an engagement of choice. These are not arrangements that we have to make, but rather financings that we choose to take advantage of, to keep us strong, to build our economic and climate resilience, to create buffers, to expand our fiscal space, to broaden our options and to help us prepare in advance for any adverse external developments that may arise. My fellow Jamaicans, with God's continued guidance, we are taking charge of our economic future. And even in a time of great economic recovery and expansion and job creation, 
we are making preparations for possible shocks in the same way that strong and empowered countries do. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification.